his stride. Great control. Great work from Rogowska. Working in the back of the courts. Ready, play at the biggest sport and entertainment event of the Australian summer. Australian Open 2012. Book at Ticketek now. As we welcome you back to uh, Melbourne Park, uh, day one of qualifying. Live coverage right here on AustralianOpen.com and the Australian Open uh, YouTube channel as well as the Australian Open uh, Facebook page. Uh, whatever platform you're uh, listening, it's uh, good to have you with us. Uh, Brett Phillips uh, upstairs uh, here and uh, alongside me is uh, Mark Tillman, of course, who's doing some uh, terrific work. Uh, with the the web team. You can tell us more about what you're doing down here. Mark, welcome. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be here. Um, well, the first week we're actually getting around the ground, getting a lot of video up on the uh, website with the uh, various players that are having the practice hits in and around Rod Laver Arena, High Sense, and some of the practice courts on the back that aren't being used for the qualifying tournament. Um, and uh, we, we really like get some of that uh, up on the website to give people sort of that behind the scenes look what's going on, how the players really get themselves tuned up for the uh, the big event coming up next week. Yeah, I think that always intrigues uh, people, uh, the before and after of the product, and particularly when we've got a, a lot of uh, young players that uh, t to some people are names, but we don't uh, know them all that well and their game and their preparation mm. and uh, a little bit about their uh, tennis journey. So I think fantastic for the, the viewers and those who log onto the website to be able to really uh, get in touch with uh, more of our players. There's no question that the more people can see how well prepared these players are to perform at the highest level, they can certainly appreciate the level of effort mm. and so forth that goes on on the court. No doubt. Uh, good win for uh, Farouk Dustov. That's the match we've uh, just watched uh, from Uzbekistan, defeating Australia's John Patrick Smith. And, uh, of course, uh, coming up uh, very shortly... It is uh, going to be uh, Dominic Meffert taking on Peter Luchak on my list. Hmm. We do have uh, Luke Seville up on the screen, but um, Australia's Peter Luchak will be uh, coming up next. And we can uh, see him uh, out on uh, court, Luch. And uh, going back three or four weeks ago, we uh, weren't quite sure if he was going to play the qualities. There was some talk he may play just the doubles at the Australian hmm. Open, but... Obviously, he's coming off a, a bit of a tough year and he's at the tail end of his career and he's decided to have uh, one more go at maybe trying to get into the Australian Open main draw. That's right. You know, we saw him last year also in the um, in the December showdown. He had a, a pretty tough match. And, yes, he's on court now, so we do know that's Peter Luchik. Um, uh, we also saw him earlier this year uh, down here at Melbourne Park preparing to play and he's really been uh, doing his best to get himself one more bite at the apple, so to speak. And we, we hope to see him uh, play at a pretty high level here. Yeah, one of the great competitors, uh, Peter. I think you know, everyone can look back on their career and uh, you're judged um, sometimes according to uh, you know being in the top ten, according to results. But all in all, in such a tough competitive sport, you're judged on getting the best out of your mm. ability. And, and Peter Luchak can certainly say he's left no stone unturned during his career. You're absolutely right. You do want to look yourself at the in the mirror at the end and say, you know, you gave it your best shot. And Peter's certainly someone who's maximised every little bit he's got. Yeah, one of the fittest players uh, going around and uh, doesn't mind the, the long battle uh, at on court. 
as we'll uh, take in some of the uh, the coin toss. All lines are covered and we're using the net device. Any questions? Either heads or tails? Heads. It's tails. You'll receive. Okay. Okay, so the big German uh, Dominic Mead is at 198 centimetres has it chosen to receive. 171 in the world has been as high as 162 uh, back in 2008. Uh, lost in the second round of qualifying at the ATP event in Doha to uh, kick off the year in uh, Qatar. And uh, last year on the the Challenger Tour, he did win in uh, Kyoto in uh, Japan. There was a finalist in uh, Wolfsburg and a semi-finalist and uh, a five-time quarter finalist on the Challenger Tour. So some uh, fairly consistent results. He did start uh, 2011, uh, ranked uh, 319 in the world. So 319 down to 171, and he's certainly very tall in stature, as we saw with um, Faruk Dustov, who's biggest mm. done the last game, who was at 196 centimetres. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they go with the ball toss. They're fortunate they're playing on court three, so the, they should be protected a little bit from the breezy conditions we have out there. Um, but as you say, it'll be uh, interesting to see how the, the ball moves around on him and how he's able to get down low to the ball to put it in play at a, at a consistent level. So this is our next match uh, coming up. We've still got, of course, a couple of other matches. Uh, just to uh, clarify, if you're logging on now, uh, six matches were originally scheduled for uh, show court three, but the last two matches have been uh, put back to tomorrow. Gianluca Nasso of Italy taking on Australia's Matt Reid and Stefan Bolli of Switzerland taking on uh, Conan Island of Ireland. So those two matches have been uh, put back to uh, tomorrow. The women will also get underway tomorrow. The draw coming out a little bit later on uh, today. Keep your uh, tweets uh, coming in, hashtag OzOpen. We'll get to as many of those as we uh, possibly can. And uh, we'll also uh, get to Adrian Franklin and David Bidmead uh, regularly throughout the course of the day who are roaming the grounds, uh, taking a look at all the outside court and courts and catching up with a number of special guests. We heard from, of course, uh, Greg Jones uh, earlier today who uh, got the last uh, wild card into the Oz Open. Uh, James Duckworth uh, watching on there. Uh, some of the matches in uh, progress uh, right now on all the uh, different courts. So you can scan your eyes over that. Uh, particular interest out on court six, a good battle between Rainer Schuttler, former finalist here at Melbourne Park, taking on uh, Chris Gucciani. Four games all there in the opening set. Arnold Clement, who also made a final here at Melbourne Park uh, many years ago. The uh, 23rd seed out in action at the moment. So you can uh, keep an eye on those results uh, right here at AustralianOpen.com while watching our live stream of all the matches here on uh, Show Court 3. And uh, Peter Luchak, um, as we mentioned, has had a pretty good tennis journey. Spending a lot of time, of course, over in uh, Sweden. His wife uh, from over there, and he's got some adorable kids too, uh, Pete, who Three enjoy minutes. coming to the tennis, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. And, and in fact, I was going to mention uh, we had a chance to talk to Peter uh, with his wife. He was actually out at a an event and they were uh, really just excited to be here back in Australia and, and uh, back on home turf so to speak. It's a very interesting sponsor uh, in his clothing range, Athletic DNA. Uh, it's not one that you see very often but it's a pretty high performance clothing attire if you will and uh, it's something to you know see how they go as they try and make their own uh, way in the uh, big uh, branding I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people ask me, uh, I work in radio, Mark, here in Melbourne, and a lot of people ask me, what's one of the great interviews you've done? And I always tell people one of my favourite interviews was talking to Peter Luchak when he first played Davis Cup for Australia away against Switzerland, and he won that opening match. And it was one o'clock here in the morning in Australia, and uh, Pru Ryan from Tennis yes. Australia, mm -hmm. fantastic, who was travelling with the team, was able to hand the mobile phone to uh, Peter as he basically was walking up the tunnel, a uh, towel draped around him, and we spoke to him, uh, and he was absolutely delighted. Uh, and obviously a bit of a fan of uh, SEN here in Melbourne, the uh, sports radio station. Mm. And was able to really share his thoughts and how much it meant to him to represent Australia at Davis Cup level. Obviously he had no crowd support over there who were barracking for the Swiss, and he silenced that crowd, and it was a great roar, uh, Chad, and I always um, tell people at chats that I've had 
on radio with a sportsman who obviously desired to represent his country and uh, started in fine fashion. Yeah, look, Leighton Hewitt has spoken very highly about Peter Luchik's uh, contribution at Davis Cup and certainly in and around the tour. Um, probably one of the less heralded Australian players right now, but certainly not, as we said earlier, one who's really maximized his potential on the tour and really got the most out of it. We, Davis Cup one is probably minute. one of the lesser, uh, shall we say, attended internationally when it comes to tennis, but the fans that go are absolutely fervent in their support of their players, and it's it's an incredible atmosphere. If you haven't had a chance to go and see that, it's certainly something you should. No doubt. Uh, the Davis Cup, of course, coming up uh, in Geelong, right here in Victoria for Australia in a couple of weeks uh, after the Australian Open, which is uh, fantastic for the people of the uh, Geelong Lawn Tennis Club. Uh, rich uh, sporting town, uh, Geelong. Ladies and gentlemen, this first round qualifier match. The tweet Versus coming in, Novak Djokovic, of course, the uh, world number one, uh, right currently chair. practicing on a closed ice sensor and not too far away from us to as he uh, chair, built up to uh, defend his Victor title. Do you know who he was hitting with? Uh, Victor Hanescu, the Romanian. He the toss a tall drink of water as well, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> Time. So this one do uh, get underway shortly here on uh, show court three. If you're just uh, locking onto our coverage on AustralianOpen.com, we had a fair bit of rain around Melbourne today, which has uh, delayed proceedings by about two or three hours. But we are out on court. We've got the lights, of course, here on our show court. That means we can uh, play into uh, tonight. Bit of hail in around Melbourne Park. Yes, yes, we've had it all. That's Melbourne. Peter Luchak to serve, ready. So Peter Luchak to serve. Opening game. A yeah, nice return Lovely. to start from the big German. To serve at 171 Ks. Wind right now is in Peter Luchik's face, so you will struggle to get the ball deep into the court. You'll look for the German to take advantage of that. Made him hit that one extra shot and drew the air. So a couple of game points here for Luchek to get away to a good start. Short ball and, and the very efficient off forehand for the winner there. Oh. 
let first service. Good aggressive forehand. Yes. Mevin gets it back to Juice. with a chance to break early here. As that uh, sun just uh, disappears momentarily. Very breezy conditions. Big gusts of wind here at uh, Melbourne Park right throughout the day. First game. So Mefford's been able to break, uh, Peter Luchek's serve. The German leads it one game to love in this uh, opening game. Keep you updated with all the action around the courts uh, today. You can uh, continue to tweet us, uh, hashtag OzOpen. Keep those uh, coming through. The only ones I can't read are the ones not in English, uh, Mark. But <laughs> Bit of my Italian. I don't want to butcher anyone's uh, language. You might have to let those ones go through to the keeper, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, wait for Tomic? He's got Dominic, match points. Fifteen long. Check there, Mefford dictating the point. Uh, Danny uh, Lopez Medina uh, sending a tweet in. Uh, what about Venezuela? We are big fans of the Australian Open. Great to have you on board. We know we have got a few people in Venezuela. Do uh, always log on to uh, AustralianOpen.com and listening to AO Radio and watching uh, all the uh, live coverage. During the two weeks. Fuzila. What are you noticing about Lochek out there, uh, Marky? Obviously, he's not coming in with uh, a lot of matches under his belt. No, he's getting ready at the same time as playing, I guess. Game, Mephit. Right, Mephit uh, holds to love. To, love for sets. to love, early lead in this uh, first round match of qualifying. Let's uh, go to David Bidmead, who's uh, out and about uh, covering some of the action for us. Dave. We've had a mixed bag of results for Australia, number one and number two. 
First of all, Matt Ebden went down in a tough match against Marcus Bagdadis in Sydney, 7-6 in the third set. Great effort from him and looking really good for the Australian Open. Great preparation still. Fair effort from him. Bernard Tomic, though, the juggernaut just keeps on rolling along. He beat top 10 player Thomas Burdich at Kyong and, uh, yeah, no stopping Bernard at the moment. He's in some great form. Back he to you guys. Certainly is. Thank you, Dave. Uh, all the results coming through. Uh, tennis right around the country in Sydney at the Army Classic and also down in Hobart. All Aussie affair tonight between Miller Gaitasova and Anastasia Rodinova. That's Thomas Burdich's first loss of the year. He had an ex extremely well played uh, couple of matches there in the Hopman Cup. So uh, kudos to um, Bernard Tomic on that. Great serve down the tee, swinging wide. Luchak really needing to hold this game before the first set gets away. Looks like he's going to pick on that backhand. Yeah. He goes down the tee again. Great service okay, going from the Looch. And he gets on the board. It is still, though, effort leading it two games to one. We'll take a break here from Melbourne Park. You're watching men's qualifying action day one as we build up to Australian Open 2012. With MLC Tennis Hot Shots, kids are ready for tennis as soon as they can swing a racket. With modified balls, courts and rackets to make things easy, they'll serve, rally and score right away. Visit tennis.com.au today. Welcome back to Melbourne Park. Day one of qualifying here on AustralianOpen.com and also through Australian Open's YouTube channel and on our Facebook page as well. And this uh, second match on uh, Show Court 3 featuring Australia's uh, Peter Luchak and uh, that man on screen there, Germany's uh, Dominic Mefford, who's had to a 2-1 lead in this opening set. Earlier today it was uh, Farouk Dustov Uzbekistan in three sets over John Patrick Smith of Australia. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, get an update around the courts at this little sit-down to uh, bring you some uh, live scores of what is going on as uh, Peter Luchak uh, changes shoe. A number of Aussies, uh, of course, taking part in qualifying it today. Still uh, John Millman and Lewis Court as we take a look here at uh, what is taking place. Uh, we're into a first set tiebreaker, Guccione and Schuttler. Arnold Clement uh, facing a bit of a battle. Against uh, Beyond Power of Germany, 7-5 uh, and 2-1 heat trails. The Frenchman, uh, 23rd seed, uh, Simon Bellelli, also losing the first set of his match. The Italian, who is seated here at uh, 14. And uh, they are some of the main matches uh, going on at the moment. Uh, Rachi Rum, with a, a tight one, the uh, 21st seed from the US. 5-all uh, there in the opening set. You can see the wind is playing havoc with the ball tosses right now. When the sunshades are moving around like that, you know it's got to be pretty windy down there. Hmm. 
15 all. Peter wants that one back. That's easy so down the middle. Money on that at 187. I think that's what Peter's going to need to do to really get himself back in this match is just play to his strength, which is get every ball back and let the German make the, the mistake. If he can keep these rallies long, his uh, opportunities to win point after point is going to increase. Easier said than done. Mm. Thirty forty. As you mentioned earlier, really trying to pepper that backhand side. Blue check. Try and draw the error. Game Double there it is. Game's over. So it uh, gives check a break back. Square in this opening set of two games apiece. A good recovery for the Australian. And a very windy day here in Melbourne, uh, top of uh, 19 degrees for the opening day of qualifying. That's some uh, big wind gusts. But, uh, four days of terrific tennis. The entree to the Australian Open starting uh, next Monday. Get your tickets at tickettech.com.au. Just see Luchak's shirt there. There's uh, maybe some of the infrastructure on court. One of the signs uh, just blowing over the beautiful uh, Jacobs Creek. With that wine being consumed over the next fortnight. No question about that. Umbrellas as well. Uh, we can take a couple of the umbrellas down. And uh, we're right to go. Fifty now. Cracking return. Ball popped right up into a sweet spot. So we did. Fifteen thirty. That's you.
30 40. Just leaning in. Skipped right off that line, didn't mm. it? Important first serve here for Peter. Game method. So method leads three games, two for sets. With a, a break of serve, we've seen that a little bit in this uh, opening set. He's got the upper hand. Three games to two. We're live here at Melbourne Park. It's day one of qualifying. We'll come back with more right after this. Ready, play at Australian Open 2012. With activity on and off court, it's outstanding value putting you right in the heart of all the action. The best in the world are coming, so book at Ticketek now. Out Time. here for a match that it's fair to say it's a blockbuster. It's Chris Cuccioni against Raina Schuttler. Now it's close. The first set just ended, and unfortunately, the Gooch couldn't quite get it done. It was a really close tie break, but Raina Schuttler took it 7 6. Uh, it's, it's incredibly tight. The conditions, we can't underestimate them at all, though. Both players are really, really struggling. At the moment, Gooch, he's got double as many aces as Schuttler, but he's also got uh, double as many unforced errors, and that's hurting him at this point. So we're early on in the second set. I know we've spoken about the blustery conditions all day, but it is incredibly difficult out here. So we've got a bit of a crowd. There are a few Germans out here as well. A few, oh, uh, let's see if Gooch can pick it up and get a couple of breaks to this second set, and then we'll move into a third set. Thank you, Adrian. Updating us on all the action uh, right across all the courts here at uh, Melbourne Park on this opening day of qualifying. Back here on uh, show court three. We've had uh, a few breaks of serve already in this opening set. 15 all. Dominic Mefford with a serve they'd like to put behind him there, but tough conditions, as Adrian said. Tillman alongside me up here in the box. We've got the comforts of the commentary box, but uh, pretty tough work, I'd imagine, there at uh, court level, Mark. I'll tell you what, it's going to be tough serving all day in these conditions, and you'll probably see some more breaks. Fifteen thirteen. Just like that, Meffert with a, uh, an ace, a double fault, and then a miscue. Yeah, the winds are in 30 to 45 K, Mark coming through Melbourne Park. That's you. Thirty forty. So another break of serve opportunity here. Oh. 
Advantage method. You know, another port important factor in this match with the conditions being as difficult as they are is your your mental preparation and how you quickly you can come back from things that just don't go your way. These guys are such creatures of habit. It'll be interesting to see who can keep their nerves. So hit to work out, but he ends the point. Another first serve here. The chairman to advance his lead of this opening set. Great return yes. from Luchek on the front foot. Really took that ball early and got effort. Uh, probably was not expecting the, sp the speed and the tempo on that return. Oh, great yeah, court coverage Luchek. from Luchak. Beautiful cross-court return. Three game yeah, goal another break of serve. Meffert took something off that first serve, and Peter really jumped on it, really dictated the point from the outset. Three games all. Check just uh, warming up into this game after a, a slow start, considered the first uh, two games. Fifteen long. Wait, please. That was the right play by Meffert to come into the net. Luchik playing probably about a meter behind the baseline. Just couldn't execute the volley to finish the point. Cracking return. Getting a power behind that from uh, Dominic Mefford. He has time to load up. That's a 
mm. formidable weapon. That's you. Let's not go on the way with a plan. The big Dominic. I was meant to say one of the great rallies of the match. But uh, Dominic Meffer would like to have ended it with a winner. That's gone straight through him. And that just tells the story of how tricky the conditions are down on court. A professional player would rarely whiff on a ball like that. It, it would just be anguishing to be in a situation like that. Peter even apologized. Oh. Yeah, we can all do that at the, you know, the local tennis club where there's no one watching. But uh, when you've got a few <laughs> eyes... Uh, and we do. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, advantage, do check. Depth of that shot, forcing the air from the German. See if he can capitalize now in the ad court. Nicely done, Peter Luchak. He's got his Italian nose in front in this opening set. Success. Four games to three. Earlier today, John Patrick Smith gained into Farouk Dustov of Uzbekistan. We'll come back after the break and see how this first set unfolds. Day one of qualifying here at Melbourne Park. Back. And 
uh, the National uh, Tennis League going to be a highlight during uh, the Australian Open. Of course, plenty Time. of uh, good Australian uh, players taking part in the various uh, states. And uh, right now, a real battle going here on show court three between Australia's uh, Peter Luchak and uh, Germany's uh, Dominic Mefford. On a windy day in Melbourne, a top of 19 degrees, but uh, winds gusting around the 40 to 45k mark. 59. Very breezy down at uh, court level, which is certainly affecting the uh, trajectory of the ball. Mefford's now serving from the good end, if you will. He's got the wind at his back. That's the only place where each player has held serve. That's you. Dead on uh, court 15 it was a long match between the Italian 27th seed uh, Matteo Viola, who was five love down in the third set and came back to win 8 6 against uh, Dusan Lovic of Serbia. That's a great effort. Both the plays with a fair bit of cramp. Chance once again here for the Australian Peter Luchak to go to a 5 3 lead after considering the opening two games of this match. Yes. A huge serve out wide to Peter's backhand. So another break point uh, opportunity. We stay self ick whoa on the, the Twitter. Can't wait to see Rafael Nadal and Marie Sharapova in action. I'm currently in Leuward in the Netherlands. Great to have you on board watching uh, on AustralianOpen.com. Yeah. He's pulled it wide. Lucha nice gets wide. the break. Five games to three in this opening Lucha set. Leads five games to three for set. Here on the show, court three, just behind the famous uh, Rod Laver Arena. I had the luxury of seeing both those players uh, doing some of their uh, pre-event warm-ups inside Rod Laver Arena, and they're both looking very fit and very ready to contend for the title. It yeah, can be a great fortnight ahead. Luchek serving for the opening Good set. Team. Starts well. Long. Change of pace on that first serve, just making sure he could get it in and get himself into the point. 
paid off. A great time for an ace out wide. So three set points here for Peter Lujak. He calls Melbourne home when he's here in Australia. And that is a cracking yeah, way to do it. it. Six games to three. And he takes it six games to three. After starting slowly, he's got into a nice groove here, the Australian. When we talked about playing your way into the match, he did exactly that. He certainly did. We'll uh, take a look at some of the action on the outside courts in just a tick. But we're going to take a break and uh, we'll come back with a whole lot more from Melbourne Park. Day one of qualifying, bathed in beautiful sunshine right now. Back to Melbourne Park. Peter Luchak taking the opening set to six games to three. Mark Tillman, uh, of course, alongside me here, and Matt Hill to rejoin us in uh, just a tick. But your quick thoughts on the opening set? Look, it, it, it's really quite simple. Peter handled the conditions a bit better. His unforced errors were significantly less. I think you're going to need to see the German um, move a bit better around in the court and um, and really force Peter to hit some of those big four, return some of those big forehands. Um, we'll see how he goes with his first serve, serving for the second set here. Love of Dean. That was a great lob by Luchik. efforts easily six four six five and dropped to drop that over his head and into the towards the baseline is very technical love city Certainly went for the line there. He's just going to have to improve his consistency to get himself back in this match. He's got all the tools. It just has to put it together. Extremely strong winds here at Melbourne Park, 30 to 45 kilometres an hour, making it really difficult out there. We saw at uh, 
there earlier, Mark. The taller you are, the harder it is to hit that swirling ball. I don't think there's any question that the taller you are, the better your footwork has to be to hit tennis ball, particularly in these tough conditions. 30, 40. Wouldn't surprise me to see Meffert come to the net more often to shorten these points so he can avoid some of the, uh, the swirling conditions, if you will. Yeah, a couple of uh, games ago, we, we saw a thin air shot, a real hit and miss. It's very difficult to run through a volley like that. You need to get stopped and get your feet set to really get that crisp. Let the ball do all the work. But it's the right tactic. Game, set. So the first game in the second set goes to the Australian after he won the first set. Let's head back down to Adrian who's doing some great work today in the grandstands. Guys, I'm here with none other than Dr. Marker Reed. Now Marker is, he heads up the athlete development team at Tennis Australia and also he won't be happy with me saying it, but he used to coach Greg Rosetsky as well. So. Fair to say he knows a little bit about tennis. That's not a bad intro, Marker. No, you've done all right there, Adrian. Yeah, reasonably, reasonably accurate. <laughs> now, summer of tennis, we're in the middle of it right now, leading up to the Australian Open. What are you doing with your team at the moment? Well, our team's probably scattered throughout the country, really, helping the athletes and coaches out, uh, whether that be in Sydney, Hobart, or right here in Melbourne right now. Um, three probably key parts to the team um, over the summer months. It's really the strength and conditioning coaches that work with work on the fitness of the players, the physiotherapists that play an important role really post-session and so on, preparing the players for the next day, and then our performance analysis team who go about collecting and coding all the video information for players to analyse their own matches and those of their opponents. So we've got Peter Luchak out there at the moment. We've got a number of players that are playing in the qualifying as well. Spoke with James Duckworth earlier, Greg Jones, they're moving into the main draw of the Australian Open. So some of these players you're working with over the next few weeks, what are the sort of things that you work with closely, uh, you know, with their tennis game? Look, to be honest, much of our work, um, the strength and conditioning coaches in particular, um, the players have just come off the back of their pre-season. So throughout November and December, there's a real concentrated effort um, or energy that's been invested into their fitness development. Um, so they will have spent the best part of four to six weeks really developing strength and aerobic endurance that's going to last them throughout the season. Um, so their fitness coaches along with their tennis coaches will be backing off um, in terms of their training volume and intensity right now to prepare them best for next week. So that'll be a focus with both James and um, Greg to be honest. So Peter Luchak is doing well on the first six 6-3 and he's up one love here. As that one just floats long. He's coming towards the end of his career, Luch, but a day like today, blustery conditions, it, it does sort of suit him. Do you think he can maybe pull off uh, qualification and, and move into the main draw of the Australian Open probably for the last time? Well, let's hope so. Look, he's got two matches ahead of him after today, he's assuming he's successful this afternoon. But he's certainly coping in it, coping with the conditions better than his opponent. You can see there's 22 unforced errors, V6 for Luch. Often what you find in these conditions as well, the, the smaller player, the better mover, um, prepare themselves more effectively than the larger player and that's what we're certainly seeing this afternoon. So Luch is able to better adjust to the incoming ball flight which in blustery conditions often sees the ball move around quite a bit so his small adjustments are certainly um, holding him in good stead this afternoon.
That's you. And great return there by the big German. We spoke to you during the playoff tournament about the fact that the average age of the top 100 players is is much higher. So we sit at about 25, 26 years of age for the top 100. We've got a few boys coming through, obviously Bernard Tomic, James Duckworth, these guys, Bernard probably ahead of the curve, as, as you mentioned during the playoff. Is that sort of average age something you, you mentioned to these guys in terms of you know taking their time and being patient? Is that at all anything a focus for you? Uh, yes and no. Look, uh, the reality is we want our kids to be better than average. We want to make sure that they are progressing uh, ahead of the curve, as you've um, indicated. And uh, stats can sometimes be misleading. So whilst the average age of the top 100 has certainly trended up, upward over the last three to four years, the age at which the average player enters the top 100 still hovers around 21, 22 years of age. So to quote um, a statistic suggesting that you know, players are in their mid-20s um, when they reach the top 100, certainly we'll see, yes. So our guys still need to be um, working with that goal in mind. In their early 20s, they really want to be inside the top 100, and ideally we're after them to be a little bit higher than that, so inside the top 50 um, come their early 20s. And you know, in Bernard's case, he's a teenager in the top 50, so which is even better. Absolutely. So Luchak, 40-30 currently. He's got the early break, one love up, so he's doing he's doing really well out there. I'll finish with one final one. Bernard Tomic, speak a lot about him. Uh, it doesn't seem like he struggles with the, the pressure at all. It seems like he really thrives and lives for it. He's progressing faster than we probably all thought. What do you think are his chances this year? Where can he can he pull off some sort of ridiculous semi-final final result yeah, at a Grand Slam? Is that is that possible? I mean, he made the quarters at Wimbledon, so clearly it's there. He has done it. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Look, no doubt. You know, Bernard's an exceptional talent, and we've seen that not just in the last year, but really the last three or four years. His results in the international junior game and then latterly in um, the professional game, the men's circuit last year. So um, I've got no doubt that uh, whether it be in the next 12 months or 24 months, we're really going to start to see the, the best of Bernard Tomic, knowing that he's only just stopped really growing. Um, so um, in effect, you know, the next, uh, next period is going to be really exciting for him. And... Uh, you know, he already made a, I guess, a quarter-final of Wimbledon, as you described just then. So to suggest that the semi-final isn't attainable this year, I think, um, you know, you'd be misplaced in doing so. As Luchak now sits at two games to love in that second set, so he's doing well at this point. So, Marco, thank you for your time. Good luck over the next couple of months with your team, and hopefully we get some of these young boys and girls pushing through in the, the next 12 to 24 months. Thanks, Adrian. Appreciate it. Adrian Franklin uh, down in the grandstand area during that last game. Uh, Mark Tillman sitting beside me was uh, certainly nodding his yeah, head in approval. Right. Peter Luchak uh, going very well. Luchak leads two games to one. Second leads second two games to one here in the second set after taking out the first. And earlier on we saw Ready, the clash play at Australian Open 2012. With activity on and off court, it's outstanding value. Putting you right in the heart of all the action. The best in the world are coming. So book at Ticketek now. Earlier on, we saw uh, Dustov from Uzbekistan. Farouk Dustov uh, defeat John Patrick Smith of Australia. It went to three sets. It went for about two and a half hours. It was a battle royale out there in the conditions. And uh, they were on and off a couple of times with a couple of small rain uh, delays and uh, Farouk Dustoff continues on his way through the qualifying rounds and here we have uh, Peter Luchak and as I was mentioning uh, Mark you were nodding in approval when he went to the oh. net there in the previous game you were happy with that well there's no question you know when you can put the pressure on someone to take the ball early and have a passing you know a rip at a passing shot in these conditions with the ball f fluttering up and around and so forth that becomes a very dangerous proposition. So if you can take the ball early, push the opponent out wide and shorten points, you're going to have a pretty good result. And you can see in the unforced error department, um, Luchak continues to lead in that department, almost 3-1. to one. He's in the box seat here. He leads 2-1. Love 15. earlier 
born in Poland, lives in Sweden, calls Australia home. Love thirty. Ripping forehand there. Meffert standing inside the baseline again, trying to get the ball early and get it flattened out to get it into the court. Luchek doing his best to play at the defensive point, just couldn't get out wide to get that ball back. Oh. Love Didn't miss my by much. No, great, great series of shots there. Mefford again uh, composing a great point. Luchak going to the slice, just got caught in the wind and went a little wide. Lex Fisher. Fifteen fourteen. Thirty fourteen. Well, that was a dominant point for Peter Luchak. He's going to need one more to get it back to Deuce. Meffert certainly wants to get this break back right here. Two games all. So we're back to all square. And don't forget that the Australian Open website is your one-stop location for everything Australian Open. Live scores, news, photos, statistics and draws. And uh, there's also the IBM Slam Tracker. Live scores, real-time statistics and a deeper insight into your favourite player's best strategy for success. AustralianOpen.com We also have Australian Open Radio on the website throughout the two weeks. Will you be providing any content to that? Doing my best to. Some great ball striking there. Luchak hitting the ball off his frame and Meffert making him pay coming in and putting the point away. It's been fascinating watching these big tall players today try and deal with the wind. It's you can just feel for them. Peace. 
30 love. That is the wonderful thing about tennis. Different conditions, different surfaces. The net's always the same size. The court's the same mm -hmm. size. But boy, every every time you play, it's different. Left-handers, right-handers. That's what makes it interesting. Left well, flirted with the line. If it looks straight at the linesman, nothing doing. Blue checks point. I think he knows it was in. Don't have Hawkeye in the qualifying rounds, of course, Mark. Oh, it's a gentleman's game out here. Fifteen. Now on the MCG end of this court, the sun is shining right in the face of a right-handed server. So now it's wind and sun that they get to deal with. That wind is really ripping through at the moment, right into Mifford's face. Check covered probably about 60 feet in about two seconds to get to that ball. I'm sure Meffert wants that volley back. Methods. So we've just ticked over the one hour mark. And things are pretty tight here in the second set. With next up on this show court, Luke Saville from Australia and Ivo Miner from the Czech Republic. It's John Millman in. Game Method. Method leads Before three games to two sets. We've had uh, a few changes uh, throughout the day, but uh, it will be Vasek, Pospisil, and John Millman after this. We're going to take a break. MLC Tennis Hot Shots, kids are ready for tennis as soon as they can swing a racket. With modified balls, courts and rackets to make things easy, they'll serve, rally and score right away. Visit tennis.com.au today. Ready? Play. At Australian Open 2012. With activity on and off court, it's outstanding value. Putting you right in the heart of all the action. The best in the world are coming. So book at Ticketek now. So welcome back to uh, Melbourne Park on AustralianOpen.com. Special coverage over the next uh, four days of the qualifying for 2012. 
And how do you think Peter Luchak's looking here, Mark? Second set. We're halfway through. It's been pretty tight. I think all things considered, he's, he's quite happy where he's at. Um, he, he certainly has the German under pressure. Um, he's getting balls back that probably Meffert doesn't think he's going to. It'll be interesting how he goes aggressively with the service game. Oh, he's let that go. He's let it go, and the linesman says it's in. And I think you'll find the chair umpire was a little bit unsighted because Luchak was standing in the way. Love of team. And uh, not a nice way to lose a point. These things happen. Uh, it'll be interesting how he responds. I don't think there's any question. He believes that ball was out. Love thirteen. Oh, well, there you have it, the, the chairperson. comes around, goes around. <laughs> Chairperson's overruled that one. On the other side of the net, Meffert really needs to consolidate right now if he wants to uh, put Luchak under pressure for the set. Oh! Now look at a second serve. So a disappointing game for Luchak. And uh, he now finds himself 4-2 or 2-4 down. Took his foot off the gas pedal a little bit there. But he's the sort of guy that's going to rebound from that. It's a cracking shot. Well struck. I would imagine as well, it'd be pretty solitary out there for him at the moment. And there's a few people here at courtside, but it's not a massive crowd that we will see over the two weeks. Very hard to lift too, I would imagine. That is the nature of the sport. You know, you really are have to self-motivate and put things that have not gone your way behind you and really be focused on the next ball. He's, he's a crafty veteran. He has the capacity to do that. Of course, when he serves down the tee at 197 kilometers an hour coming at you, that makes it a bit more difficult, doesn't it? This has been a quick game for Meffert. And a Yay. successful one. A real buffer here in the yeah, second set leads. for... At least five games two second sets. This Dominic Meffert from Germany, he now leads 5-2 in the second set. Certainly has been uh, swings of, of momentum with Peter not really having it at the beginning, getting it, it towards the middle, and now Meffert clearly in control of the second set.
We're going to take a very quick break. Back with more of Luchak and also Mifford after this. <laughs> Welcome back. Wow. This is Melbourne Park on, well, what is a sunny afternoon at the moment, but uh, it changes by the minute today. And Peter Luchak's just in a little bit of trouble here in the second set. Won the first, was comprehensive enough, but is now down 5-2, and the German Dominic Meffert has his opponent on the ropes and looking down the barrel of uh, a third set. Mefford leading 5-2 and is receiving now. Level D. For a big man, he is quite agile around the net. No, he seems to have worked his way into the match. His footwork is certainly getting better, particularly on that backhand side. He really never struggled in the forehand. Um, and the return of service, he's getting a lot lower as well. Fifteen all. Peter really needs to win this service game to get his mojo back. He is serving from the good end. Oh, a serve straight at the body. Set that one up nicely for Peter Luchak. Big kick serve there. Tickettech.com.au for all of your ticket needs for the Open starting on Monday. Ground pass is terrific value. So has he got his mojo back? He'll need to. He trails 3-5, Luchak, in the second set. Well, again, Meffert will be looking into the sun, and the wind will be swirling mostly in his face. I expect Peter to take some pretty good swings at some of the balls coming to him. Shot. Love the team. Again, his experience out there. Last game, knew he had to hold serve, and knowing he was at the end where he could take some swings at the ball here, paying off in the first point. Not a good time. Not that there e ever is a good time to serve a double fault, but that just puts a little bit of confidence back into Luchek's corner. Fifteen. Oh. 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 
But it had to be that good. Peter had crossed over to get that second ball. Back hard at Luchak in game. But Luchak has just a little sniff now, a break point to get this set back on serve. Big point this one. And he's got him. Yeah. It is back on serve. So the second set looks this way. Center. It's Mefford five, Luchak four, and Peter Luchak is not done with yet in this second set. And so we'll return to show court three shortly at Melbourne Park. So back on show court three. Have a look at those uh, conditions. What are we worried about? Beautiful Time. blue sky. <laughs> what do they say? Four seasons in yeah, one day? I think we've had about eight today. It was uh, an interesting morning if you've just joined us. Uh, we were almost ready to play and then it rained and then we were almost ready to play again and then it rained again. But we, uh, we kicked off at about quarter past 11, 11.30 for memory. Maybe even a bit later actually. Might have been. And uh, we've come this far, and Peter Luchak, things back on serve in this second set. Love the team. Surprisingly agile to get to that drop shot and then put it in a place where there's no chance Peter could track that one down. Fifteen on. Deep, fast, first serve, set that point up nicely. Yeah, it was well played. You knew when he buried his feet on the return that Peter was going to have a chance to really get a, uh, put the ball in the place where the, he was not going to be able to get it either. So, first one to three now. Yeah. Oh. This is the part of the match where self-belief cannot be underestimated. Please take a seat at the back of the court, thank you. How quickly a game can swing. I think he has got his mojo back, Mark.
beautiful drop shot. 40, 30. Peter did everything he can to make him hit one more ball, and he certainly did that. Five That's a good game for Luchak. Just put a little bit extra into each and every shot there. It's now five all. Brett and I were talking earlier on, Mark, about the Australian Open. Uh, what are your early thoughts uh, in the men's, first of all? Well, the wonderful thing about the Australian Open is that it, there are so many people coming in with everybody comes in 0-0. Zero, zero. So the the ability to come in and play your best tennis and really catch a flyer and you see that year in and year out that someone outside who you think might get there does. Again, a Love beautiful hop for Bill Luchik to get it over the big fella and then drop it in again with the wind in his back that can't be understated how difficult a shot that is. Let for service. Love for team. Again, talking about the mental aspect of a game, a double fault sometimes really falls into that category, it particularly did in that instance. chance here for Luce. He's rushing. Fantastic job of staying in that point. His fitness being the reserve that he has to stay in the point. Just phenomenal. Well, this is a massive opportunity for Peter Luchak. Three break points. Be serving for the match if he can do it. A bit casual on that one. And we took his eye off the ball, try to see it over the net instead of seeing it over the, onto the racket. Had it spent before he hit it. Mm-hmm. Even on a second serve to go into the body is, is a very good decision. Well, it was 168 break. kilometers an hour. Had a little bit of pace on it. Mm.
No advantage, Matthew. It was the right choice to come in off the short reply and really put the pressure on Peter to hit a passing shot there. Thought he had the line open, but Meffert really got across that. Chris Volley for the winner. to uh, let this game go easily. We're back to Deuce. This is where tennis really becomes like boxing. Who can impose their will? you're in the area in the next three or four days it's all free admission here at Melbourne Park for the qualifying you might just spot a couple of familiar names walking around as well Game. well Miffitt's held on leads. he has five. gripped on for dear life Sorry, and yes. he leads 6-5 second sets back to Melbourne Park shortly Melbourne Park. Mark's just made a, an interesting observation to me uh, off mic. Uh, there's people in the crowd wearing t-shirts and and some of them look like they've just come out of a Norwegian winter. <laughs> Only in <laughs> Melbourne. Only in Melbourne. So this has been a real arm wrestle in the second set, hasn't it? If it leading 6-5 things back on serve. Yep, he's put the acid back on Peter Luchik to uh, hold his serve. Uh, played a bit more consistently in that last set. Ball striking very consistent and frankly hitting with more pace than Peter. Uh, Peter the crafty and wily veteran will need to lift a little bit here to really get himself into the tie break. Mifford up, 6-5, second set. Level thing. There was that very heavy forehand from Mefford putting the pressure on Peter early in that point.
Thirteen. Particularly the forehand down the line to set up the easy overhead. Although again, in these conditions, nothing is easy, is it? A dog and approach. He's going to try and track down every ball, and in the wind, it's going to hold up just that little extra amount, allowing Peter to chase it down and get it in for a winner. So, Muchak is one point away from a tie break here in the second set. Story of this set, a couple of crucial double faults in this second set. Both players will be beating themselves up about missing those second serves. In these conditions, anything can happen, but you got to get the ball in play, don't you? has done it Peter Luchak and Game we're now into a tie break in this tie. second set and at this point it would be impossible to pick the winner of it. A wise person once said that's why they play the game. But if you look at the uh, unforced errors you'd have to give Luchak a little bit of an advantage perhaps. We've ticked over the hour and a half mark on show court three. I think it's fair to say the wind is driving the German nuts. of close shaves from both players. Matches here in qualifying, three sets, first two tie break and we go into advantage in the third. Oh. 
One on. Peter really wants to take it to the next level. He's really going to have to increase his first serve percentage. Meffert's really getting a, quite a few looks at a second serve, and that's not going to get it done in a tiebreaker. serve. I'm going to have to thank him later for that. That ball blew behind Meffert. Sniff here for Luchak. That's missed. That's missed, and Luchak is now in the box seat. Does he need to do here, Mark? A couple of good, solid first serves would be lovely. He needs to slow down and get those first serves in. Play with confidence. bit slower 138 kilometers an hour but it was the placement that was perfect and he now leads 5-1 in this tie break I think that's the key isn't it the confidence aspect he was serving it was at 5-3 earlier on for memory and he that's right got the yips there he couldn't serve it out get to the pointy end of, a, of an athletic competition it usually does boil down to the mental aspect and how much self-belief you have both players are incredibly athletic oh! just missed five two Points up his sleeve here, Luchak. And in these conditions, Mark is serving such an advantage. Well, it is. If you have that first high percentage of first serves going in, you know that the opponent's going to have to be on their back foot a little bit. Six two. So Luchak now as a result, 6-2 up and has a handful of match points. And he's done. An Australian win on show court three and he's pretty happy about it too. Peter Luchak winning 6-3, 7-6.
and the look of delight uh, written across his face he is uh, looking pretty happy about it well done to him what did you make of it in the end mark it was uh, dominant early a bit of a scrap towards the end but sh really did show his fighting qualities I think there's no question that Peter was a little nervous coming out on court. Some of his uh, earlier offerings were uh, short. Uh, and then whatever, wherever he went to, he just decided that it was time for him to play his type of game. And boy, did he just sit right down into that. And it really, really paid off in the end. So as, and he's uh, getting a visitor as well. A couple of visitors to come say good day to him. Lovely touch at the end of a hard-fought match. And always nice to see the family at any point, isn't it? There's no question. That is sensational. So it's Peter Luchak, 6376. He continues on, of course, all of the women's action tomorrow. Coming from uh, Show Court 3 here as we head downstairs to David Bidmead. Peter Luchak, congratulations on your first round qualifying wins. Your last Australian Open singles campaign, I believe. Yeah, that's right. So my singles career is not quite over yet. I've still got at least another match, but I uh, wasn't expecting too much. So I was playing really relaxed and uh, it was tough conditions out there, so windy. So I just try and get the ball in the court. How did you find the conditions? I mean, obviously very windy, cold conditions, to normal use yeah. in the summer. Yeah. Um, did you find that you had to adjust your game a bit to, to normally play? Yeah, um, I just sort of w went for bigger uh, margins in the court, wasn't hitting it too close to the lines. I was just trying to get the ball in the, uh, in the court actually because uh, it's hard to hit winners out here when so uh, blowing and gusty all the time. So yeah, adjusted it a little bit, but it, it, the winds are equalised. I'm sure on a still, da still, still day, uh, that guy would probably beat me. I don't believe that. <laughs> Got some uh, extra practice partners here yeah, as well, right. mate. Yeah. Can you say good day? This is Millie. Say hello. And this is Sebastian. <laughs> Hi, no, they were really good in the stands. They were watching my whole match, so they didn't say too much, so they were good. What would be your fairy tale result for your last Australian Open campaign? I was just hoping to win a round, so I've done that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be playing doubles with Leighton, so you know, it'd be good to win a few matches in the doubles, but if I qualify, it's a bonus as well. Absolutely, well, good luck, all the best for the rest of the Open, and uh, hopefully you get through, mate. Thanks a lot, beauty. Thanks, guys. Well done Back to Peter to Luchak and also uh, David Bidmead uh, doing all of the hard work down there on, uh, on show court uh, three. And uh, well, Mark, in the end, uh, when it comes down to windy conditions and, and the tall men, unforced errors is key. And uh, that was the story, really, with uh, Dominic uh, Meffert. Too many mistakes and Peter Luchak was able to scrap out that, that second set. There's, there's no question the wind is the equalizer when and Peter rightly pointed out he just tried to keep the ball on the court and wait for uh, Meffert to make the mistake um, and and that's exactly what he did um, there were 